think, unfortunately, journalists continue to be really frustrated with the FOIA process. I think if you look at the trends over the last few years, the number of exemptions keep going up, the number of lawsuits keep going up, um, and the delay keeps going up. So I don't really see any uh, improvement in terms of the long-term trends in FOIA. And that's really frustrating for journalists because they rely on it to do their reporting, and it's not working for them. There were big changes to FOIA um, that Congress passed in 2016. Um, among those changes are the codification of the foreseeable harm standard, which basically now means that an agency has to show not only that records fall within the technical scope of an exemption, but also that they reasonably foresee that uh, release would cause identifiable harm. Um, so that's really great. The uh, 2016 amendments also put a sunset, a 25-year sunset, on the deliberative process privilege, which is a really overused uh, exemption in FOIA. Um, and so now a lot more historical records are becoming available. So that's great. Um, the agency also, or I'm sorry, Congress also increased the deadline for uh, administrative appeals. So FOIA requesters now have 90 days to submit administrative appeals instead of the kind of unspecified standard beforehand. Uh, so all of those things are, are better for FOIA requesters, but I think there's a lot of work to be done still. Records that are older than 25 years at the time of the request um, cannot be held under the deliberative process privilege. Famously, they used that to withhold a, uh, a history of the Bay of Pigs that the CIA had written. Um, they said the disclosure would you know, harm the agency's deliberative process about what was going on during the Bay of Pigs. I think a lot of journalists and people in the FOIA community thought that was nonsense, and Congress agreed. It's true that there have been some studies that show that commercial requesters are actually among the largest uh, users of the Freedom of Information Act. Um, the percentage varies by agency, um, but they have been shown to be one of the, the greatest users of FOIA. Usually uh, companies that are maybe seeking some kind of uh, competitive advantage, uh, they want to know what kind of bids their rivals are submitting. They want to know how the agency is making decisions about what it's looking at. Um, it, can, it can vary uh, by agency, but those are some types of things that a, a commercial requester might want. I think one is to really sit down and think carefully about how you word your request. The wording of your request is really going to have an effect on it throughout its lifetime. And if you spend a little bit of time up front um, clarifying exactly what you're after, you're going to get better results throughout the process. Um, so that's one tip I would give. Uh, the other one, I think, is, is to really stay on top of it. Um, FOIA is, you know, requests are, are a long-term endeavor, um, and oftentimes the agency is going to take a really long time to get back to you. But, so I think it's important to stay on top of it, you know, submit requests for uh, an estimated date of completion, follow up with the FOIA officer, um, do your administrative appeals, um, and you're more likely to get positive results if you're on top of things.